with each one of the Batman films, with The Dark Knight Returns, which has already been done, and then 2, 3, and 4, which are coming up, there's been a very specific, difficult challenge. It's interesting how it's worked out. In The Dark Knight Returns, the huge challenge, in my mind, was finding a racetrack and finding a race car. I mean, short of me doing it completely in miniature or doing it in CGI, which I didn't want to do, finding that racetrack to me was the biggest hurdle. And once I knew I had the racetrack scene, I knew I could do the rest of the film. There were going to be tough parts and easy parts, but that racetrack scene to me, that was the crux of the whole thing. If I could tackle the racetrack, I could make the whole film. Well, as I'm moving forward, I'm finding there's kind of a weird hurdle in each one of the movies. And in part two, which is Dark Knight Triumphant, we're going to need two locations. And they could be basically the same location, but we're going to need sort of the junkyard and then the mud hole where Batman and Mutant Leader have their big epic fights. So, so just think about that. Um, you need a junkyard where you can bring in a bunch of actors and have a fight and nobody gets hurt and keep it safe and stage it like it's at night. And you don't have millions of dollars to light up the world. So you either need to shoot day for night or you need to shoot under a covering so that it looks like night. I mean, it's, it's a huge thing. And then to fight in a mud hole, a water-filled mud hole, again, so that neither actor gets injured. So part of what's sort of gotten me over the hump on Dark Knight Triumphant is I think I've found a location to do the junkyard and the mud hole. Don't quote me on this yet, but I was searching around the St. Louis area and I stumbled upon something and I'm doing the research now. And if I can score that location, man, that'll be a godsend. A fun thing that did happen for Dark Knight Triumphant is, uh, do you know how in the first Dark Knight film, you go down in the Batcave and you see the giant robotic T-Rex. The T-Rex in the Batcave is as iconic as the giant Joker card and the Penny and some of the other trophies he has. Well, we did it as an effect shot because you only saw the T-Rex really one time. In doing more scenes in the Batcave, I thought it would be really fun to stage some of the sequences between Bruce and Alfred in front of an actual T-Rex. Well, here in St. Louis at the St. Louis Science Center, there's a large mechanical T-Rex that they have. And I've tentatively gotten permission from them to shoot bat cave scenes in front of this large T-Rex. We'd have to, you know, dress it and put up some black drapes and control the lighting so all you really see is us and the T-Rex. But I thought that was amazing because the, the St. Louis Science Center here has uh, been incredibly supportive of local filmmakers and in particular my Dark Knight film all the way along. So I, I really thank them for that. In the third film, which would be Hunt the Dark Knight, the hurdle is an amusement park because of course Batman and Joker have their big, huge, epic final showdown in this tunnel of love inside this amusement park. So when I get around to making that one, I'm gonna have to find an amusement park somewhere that's okay with me shooting, you know, chase scenes and people getting shot and then, you know, find something that resembles the tunnel of love where I can have my final showdown with the Joker. So sometimes I know fans wonder, like in The Dark Knight Returns, well, the scene where he saves Carrie Kelly from the mutants, that originally took place in an arcade. Why didn't you shoot it in an arcade? Well, we couldn't find an arcade. You know, we looked and looked and looked and we couldn't find an arcade. We found one location in Forest Park in St. Louis that resembled what was in the comic book, but we were going to have to rent it. There was no way we could get it for free. And the rental and the restrictions on the rental just became prohibitive. Even if I could have afforded to rent it, I couldn't have shot the scene the way I wanted to. And that's why we ended up shooting in an abandoned mall, Crestwood Plaza, which by the way, Crestwood Mall is no longer there. We were the last people in there. We were the last production to shoot in Crestwood Mall. It is now a memory. It is a graded dirt lot. In part four, the Dark Knight Falls. To me, the hurdle there is not the fight between Batman and Superman. The hurdle is not, you know, showing the blackout hitting Metropolis and all the riots and all the craziness. I, I know how to do all that. To me, the biggest hurdle, and it's going to start in part three and go into part four, is Superman. I'm going to have to find an actor 
who can do Superman. So I, I need to start casting about for that Superman actor now. And I know there are Superman actors out there who've done other fan films, and I'm and I, I'm considering talking to them and seeing if they have any interest. Uh, but yeah, finding finding a good Superman, finding somebody who's hopefully you know bigger and taller than I am to make me look small. Um, and I'm I'm six one and probably. 230 pounds right now so finding somebody who's gonna make me look small is gonna be tough but one cool thing about the Dark Knight Falls is that I have a line in on a very convincing exterior for Wayne Manor in the first film the interior scenes were shot here in St. Louis but the exterior was actually a stock shot it'd be nice to shoot on the grounds of a large manor and I and we've found that we've tentatively gotten permission to shoot exterior scenes because there will be scenes of Bruce watching Carrie Kelly practicing on horseback and when Bruce first talks to Clark Kent you know Clark warns Bruce to stop it or he's gonna get ordered to come and stop him 